At the ancient heart of Canterbury Cathedral, a specially commissioned art installation is attracting a great deal of attention. It's a new work by Turner Prize winning sculptor Anthony Gormley entitled Transport. This is the first time he's seen it installed in the Norman crypt. The thing I'm thrilled about is the way that it's held by the space. So, yes, so yes. it and the space kind of become one thing. They interact in a, in a wonderful way. This is a human figure and it's suggestive of our human condition in all its vulnerability. It's created by Anthony Gormley from the nails taken from the medieval transept when we were restoring the roof. And it's lying or su suspended over the place where Beckett's shrine first was in a temporary way before it was placed upstairs. We remember Rye's lying just above it. I had lent a work to Canterbury Cathedral for a show I can't remember how many years ago, maybe four years ago. Anyway, somebody rang me up and said, we've got a bunch of nails that came out of uh, the roof. Do you want them? I said, well, send them down and I'll have a look. And, uh, yeah, we tried welding some together and they seemed to fit. I mean, they seemed to stay together. And that was the beginning of it. The suspended nature tends to give it that airy quality which the word transport that he's chosen, where things pass through, like the pilgrim is passing through this place, actually are, are, are centred on the human frame. I think it's suggestive, therefore, of the vulnerability that Beckett's martyrdom in his own cathedral suggests. I would much prefer to see the piece in natural light. This vaulted ceiling would provide, as it were, a volume of space. I think, for me, that is what a cathedral is. We suggested the space because it was a space that we wanted to reinterpret in a helpful way because nothing is here now. It's the, the Chapel of the Eastern Crypt, but there's nothing to suggest its original purpose. I like cathedrals because they're so much about dreaming in and for thinking about maybe what lies beyond the functional bits of life. And even though I'm you know, not a Christian and I'm not religious, I think that these spaces, because of their connection to, I suppose, historic times, give us very precious places in a busy and very noisy information world where we can kind of somehow be a bit apart and think about our own lives in relation to maybe a wider perspective. I think any artwork reinterprets a particular space and it takes its creative place amongst so many other things here of great beauty and value. It means that we are carrying on our, our mission of creating things which suggest both this community and also an interaction with, with human creation uh, as it goes forward. It's nice to think that the, the material out of which the work is made in, in a way already has a connection with here and that actually rather than being thrown away, these things that have already had quite a functional life can now have a, if you like, an imaginative life. Hopefully the, the work, simply by, in a way, being completely open, literally, as a structure, but also in terms of its meaning. Who is it? Why is it here? Those sort of questions are completely open and it's I think up to every visitor, every viewer, to make up their own minds. And for me, you know, the subject isn't in the work, it's in the person who's looking. And I guess people come to churches because they are places of silence, and they're in the world but slightly separated from it, from which they can take a view on their own lives. And I hope that this work in a quiet way will help them do that.